Let's translate John chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Ego emi e thira di emu eon tis iselthi, so thisete, ke iselevsete, ke exelevsete, ke nomin evrisi. O kleptis uk erchete, emi ina klepsi ke thisi, ke apolesi, ego elthon. Ego ilthon inazoin echosin ke perison echosin. Literally, it's I am the gate or the door. Through me, if anyone enters, he will be saved and he will enter and he will go out and pasture he will find. The thief is not coming except in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came in order to life they might have and abundantly they might have. So to diagram this, we have another ego and me that we've seen before. Ego and me, e thira. I'm the door. But then, move it up here. Then we have something interesting. We have a new phrase, and it's a third class conditional statement. If anyone enters through me, so this is the Protasis, and then we have this right here. This is the apodosis. So we have. I am the door or the gate. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. Anyone will be saved. And anyone will go in, and anyone will go out, and anyone will find pasture. Now, verse 10, we have the thief comes. not it's a weird construction to our english ears the thief does not come except in order to steal kill and destroy now it contrasts with Jesus. I came in order that they might have life and have it abundantly. I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and he will enter and he will go and he will find pasture. The thief does not come except in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came in order that they might have life and have it abundantly. So ego and me, I do want to show you real quick. It's right here. And God said to Moses, ego and me, o on. This ego and me construction is huge. This is part of the translation in Greek for Yahweh. So when Jesus says ego and me, that's huge. 
It's very important. But then he also is making an analogy, right? E theora. I am the door. I'm the gate. Now, aeon plus subjunctive, which is what we have here. This is third class condition. There's several different conditions in Greek. This is the third class condition. Aeon plus subjunctive in the protasis. Okay? That's exactly what we have. And then third class allows any mood in the apodosis. So what is third class condition? There's three options. Usually, though, the third class condition uh, is suggestive of something that is uncertain of fulfillment, but still likely to occur. So it can be logically connective if A then B. It could be hypothetical. If it's hypothetical, then it's assumed it's not going to occur. Or it could be future more probable. In the sense of future more probable, it's likely to occur in the future. There's no real sense here of future. And it's clearly not hypothetical because it is expecting a positive uh, occurrence. So this seems to be just more a logical if A than B. If you do this, then this will happen. If someone enters through me, well, then they will be saved. And they will be able to enter and go and find pasture. This is a, a shepherd's analogy. It's a sheep analogy. Now, one note on the kleptes here, because... Uh, this is not the first time the thief has been mentioned. Thieves, plural, were mentioned in verse 8. And so Jesus is saying, hey, those thieves that uh, the people did not listen to, the sheep did not listen to, uh, th they, they're the baddies. And he characterizes them as someone who comes with the express purpose of stealing. And if not to steal, then to kill. And if not to kill, then simply to destroy. The construction in Greek is different than how we would put it in English. Usually in English, the translations just take out the negative aspect. So instead of saying the thief does not come except to or in order to steal, kill, destroy, it just takes the negative component out. The thief comes in order to still kill and destroy. But in Greek, it's not, it's not positive in that sense. It's negative and emphatic. Of course, the thief only comes to still kill and destroy. The, the thief doesn't come for any other reason. The thief does not come except to do <laughs> thievery, right? Or to destroy. Ina is expressing purpose. Ina plus subjunctive. In this case, it's aorist subjunctive, but it's subjunctive. So in order that, or you can simply just say that, or you could simply just say to, but I've included it in my translation, in order to steal, kill, and destroy. And then the same thing happens down below. I came in order to, the purpose I came for is so that my sheep might have life and have it abundantly. Let's look up a few words. Thera means door. But it can also mean entrance, doorway, gate. And in this instance, uh, it's a portrayal of a passage, an opening to a passage. 
but it's a shepherd's term in this sense, right? So following the context, it's a gate, a sheep's gate. Dia plus the genitive, via, through, through me, aeon, if, enter, is, is elthi. This is erkome. Then we have sozo, to save. Now this is third singular future passive indicative. It's passive because thes tense formative, future. So will be saved. He will be saved. This is to preserve or rescue from natural dangers and afflictions. Save, keep from harm, preserve, rescue, save from death, bring out safely, save, free from disease, keep or preserve in good condition. Thrive, prosper, get on well. It can also mean to save or preserve from transcendent danger or destruction. Save, preserve from eternal death, from judgment, and from all that might lead to such death, such as sin. Um, in a positive sense, though, it can also mean to bring salvation or bring to salvation. In the passive, it's to be saved, to attain salvation. And there's 10.9 right there. So it seems that sozo here is to be in a transcendent sense. That makes sense because of the context, right? Uh, in verse 10, that you might have life and have it abundantly. And you will go in, you will go out, and you will find Evrisco here. So this is a third singular future active indicative. You know something's weird uh, because the kappa has dropped out and the yoda has lengthened to an eta. So you can see future of Riso here. And here we go. Find pasture. To come upon something either through purposeful search or accidentally, but either way it's find. Then we have Kleptes, the thief. Come, except let's take a look at E here. I want to show you all the way at the bottom of E. Because E is very fluid. It's got a lot of options. And here it is. It means except, if not, the thief comes, does not come, except... Well, the thief does not come, if not, in order to steal, kill, and destroy. You can also see Ina. Marker to denote purpose, aim, or goal, in order that, or simply that. With the subjunctive, which is what we have here. Erchete is present middle indicative. But we have, in order that, Subjunctive, third singular aorist active. So just generally speaking, with subjunctive, marker to denote purpose, aim, or goal. Klepto, kleptomaniac, is someone who steals, right? Theo, this can be sacrifice, but it can also be to take life, kill, or slaughter in a generic sense, used of humans. It can also be used of agriculture and of animals. A polemi. So this is to ruin or destroy. We've seen life before, Zoe. Life in the physical sense, life in a transcendent sense. And have it abundantly perisos this is an adverb its basic meaning is to exceed usual number or size it's pertaining to that which is not ordinarily encountered extraordinary remarkable uh, but it's also to pertaining uh, to being extraordinary extraordinary in amount so abundant profuse it's going beyond what is necessary 
So have something in abundance. What's interesting about this phrase is in order that they might have life and have abundance. Have abundantly. So there is essentially a connection between echosin, echosin here. Have life abundantly. But it's in this awkward, repetitive way. I couldn't find any good reasons for this. I just intuitively feel like this is uh, redundance in Greek. In English, we smooth it out. So, um, I came in order that they might have life and have it, it being implied, abundantly. I checked numerous co commentaries and translations, and that's the general gist. So I think I'm barking up the right tree. But what do you think? How do you translate inazoin echosin ke person echosin? Let me know in the comments. So to translate it, I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will enter in and go out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I came in order that they might have life and have it abundantly. If you liked this video, hit the like button. Otherwise, brush up on your Greek and Hebrew, and we will see you next time.